Hello and welcome to Mad Knitting. My name is Susan, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin, where I live and work. Today is Friday, February the 17th. The year is 2023 and I love to talk about knitting, so I decided to make a whole YouTube channel about it. And so far I'm having fun, so I'm gonna keep going with it. Um, I like to talk about knitting and yarn and what I am making. Sometimes I talk about sewing when I'm doing it. I don't have any sewing today. And occasionally other topics sneak in if I have something particularly interesting that I am reading or if there's another project happening in my life. Um, I'm a professionally trained musician, so sometimes I talk about that a little bit. I also occasionally venture into social, social and political topics. I try to keep that limited to when it's relevant to a project I'm working on or if it's an issue that's just too big to ignore at the time that I'm recording, but I keep that, um, I try to keep that succinct because this is really about knitting. Um, but the reason I mention that is because I do talk about these things. I believe that what happens politically affects our everyday lives and we can't really ignore that. I can't really ignore that. Um, it's just a part of, it's important to what I do and how I live my life. And so sometimes I bring that up here. Um, yeah. So speaking of that, there is a primary election happening in Wisconsin next Tuesday. Early voting is open and um, statewide, there is a really important thing happening, which is the open seat on the Supreme Court. Right now, there are four candidates. Two of them are very progressive. It's nonpartisan, but obviously, you know, you can kind of tell where they lean. Two are very progressive, two are very conservative. And this is a big deal right now because um, conservatives in leadership positions in the state would like to enforce a law from 1849 that bans abortions across the board for any reason. And if we end up with another conservative on the Supreme Court, that law will be upheld and that would be disastrous, disastrous for reproductive care in particular healthcare in general in Wisconsin. So it's really important that, in my opinion, that we get one of the progressive candidates into that seat in order to preserve reproductive rights and access to healthcare and keep people wanting to live in the state of Wisconsin. Because, you know, in some ways it's getting harder and harder. That's all I'm gonna say about that, okay? Enough with that. Um. I have been meaning to open up a Google form for several videos now, and I just like keep forgetting to do it. So today I'm finally gonna do it. But the whole reason is because occasionally I will get questions in the comments uh, below my videos. And if there's a question that you would like me to answer here, I wanna make sure you have the opportunity to ask it. So if you want to leave a comment with a question, that's fine. But I will also open a Google form in case you don't want, in case you don't want your name, you know, or your, your profile public. Um, so you can ask me pretty much anything you want. If it's anything like too personal or intrusive or like mean spirited, I'm going to ignore it. But if you have a question for me about knitting or anything else, feel free to ask. So that will be linked in that description box below here. I will tell you what I'm wearing before I jump into the other stuff for today. Um, this is called the Blackberry Bramble or Blackberry Bramble. It's a cowl, obviously. I made this in 2014. I've had it for so long that I couldn't remember when I made it and I had to go look it up. So this is about nine years old. This was a test knit for Thea Coleman. Baby Cocktails is her online handle. And for being nine years old, you can see how well it has held up. It's not a Mobius cowl. 
Um, you can see that the it's it was a provisional cast on and you knit this big long tube and then graft it together, which I think was somewhere in this blue section. I used Barocco Ultra Alpaca Worsted Yarn and I love how it's held up. I mean, this thing is almost a decade old. I wear it all the time and there's no pilling, no fuzzing. It's just, it just looks really good. So as you can see, there's two colors used, equal amounts. Um, I think I used less than two skeins of each color. And because you knit it in the round, it's double thick in the solid sections, about twice that for the color work because you're, you've got two strands of yarn going. And then on top of that, it's long enough that you can double it up, which I often do. I wear this on very, very cold days. I have put it on this morning because I was outside shoveling snow and pulling the trash can up and everything. Um, when you double it up, it's even warmer. So I might overheat and have to take this off at some point, but I really love it. It's just the right length that if I double it up and if it's really cold and windy outside and if I'm biking somewhere or, or walking, um, I can actually kind of pull it up on my face around my ears and it will, it will stay more or less. And it can, it keeps the wind from, from sneaking in. Um, underneath like under you know in my neck and getting me really cold so I really like this one yeah we've had like some bizarre roller coaster winter weather lately so like the pattern seems to be we'll get a snowstorm like there was actually a school was out last week one day we'll get a snowstorm a bunch of snow and then it'll warm up a bunch of it'll melt might even get rain then it gets cold again and we get a bunch more snow so yesterday it was not a snow day for the schools but we got a winter storm and there's all this beautiful new snow on the ground and it's nice and it's very cold today so it's very powdery snow and it's very bright and shiny and pretty and i am looking forward to getting out there later today and um maybe doing a little cross-country skiing we'll see I only started doing that last winter and it was fun. I'm not good at it, but I enjoy it. Today, I will be sharing about um, some finished objects, some works in progress, and if there is time, I will be doing a little talk about stash. But we'll see. But we'll see. So let's start with finished objects. The first one I don't have with me, so I can't show you the object, but I will insert a picture. It's just a simple hat that I made for my son. His birthday was last week, and one of the things I gave him was a hat. He has other hats that I have made him, but I've noticed that he likes he doesn't like to have to turn up the brim. I guess he thinks that's too much work, or maybe he doesn't like the look of it. I don't know but he did comment that he would prefer a hat that he can just pull on without having to fold up a cuff. So I asked him what color he would like, and he said maybe some dark green, because I've made him so many blue and gray hats lately. So I took some of the yarn that's left over from a sweater I made for my daughter for her birthday in December, um, and I made him a hat. I didn't use a pattern. I just did knit one, purl one, beanie till it was long enough to do decreases for the top. And I did four point decreases and yeah, very simple. There are free patterns online that you can find. I didn't use one, I just, I think I cast on 100 stitches or maybe 104, I don't remember. Anyway, um, the yarn I used is one of my favorites. It's home worsted. Are y'all proud of me? I remember the label today for this one, not for anything else. It's Home Worsted from Barrett Wool Co. It's the color Big Woods. And I really love this yarn. I actually have a whole full skein of it left in addition to this because I don't know, I guess I overestimated the yardage I needed for my daughter's sweater. 
but it's just, it's, it's lovely to work with and it's very soft and squishy and makes a really comfortable hat and also wears pretty well, I think. So it's a good, good hat for him. But you'll just have to take my word on it because I don't have it to show you. I think he wore it today because it's cold. The second finished object I have to show you is also for my son, also for his birthday. And I've talked about this before. This is, I can't find the other one. So I hope it's not like lost already, but I made him a pair of black socks. Again, with no pattern, I just, you know, followed my own. I've knit enough socks, I just kind of know how to do it. But he is in the youth orchestra program here locally and at their last concert, he failed sock inspection. They were actually going around the room and checking every kid's ankles to make sure they had black socks on. And the socks he was wearing were very, very dark gray, which apparently was not good enough. So um, even though I know I could buy him black socks, I thought it would be fun to make some because he really loves to wear hand knit socks. So I got some Knit Pick Stroll in black and I um, cast on, I always go from cuff to toe. I cast on 72 stitches on a size one needle. I don't know if any of these details are going to show up here. Kind of, yeah, you can kind of see. That's an eye of partridge heel there. Um, I always do a garter ridge along the edge of the heel because I think that makes for easy, it's easy to pick up the stitches and keep it like nice and tight so there aren't any gaps or holes. And yeah, for the toe, what I always do is decreases along the sides every other round until I get close to the end, then I knit two together and pull the yarn through the end, which is a lot easier than grafting, and I think the fit is just fine. So I'm calling these orchestra socks because that's what they're for, assuming he finds the other one. <laughs> Black socks, man, like, so easy to lose, right? It can get lost in the hamper, it can get stuck in the bottom of the drawer. You know, camouflage with the shadows, I don't know, but anyway. So those are two of my finished objects. The third one, it's not quite a finished object, but I'm finished with my part of it. And I've talked about this before as well. So this is the main body of the weekend pullover. And um, if you haven't seen previous episodes where I talked about this, I'll give you a little recap. So this is a project for my mom. She started knitting this sweater last year. I don't know what time last year, but she had been working on it for a while and was getting frustrated with it because as you can see, there is this complicated cable panel in the front. I think it's about, um, I mean, the ones on the sides are pretty straightforward, but this sort of lattice part in the middle is maybe a 24 round repeat. And she kept making mistakes and getting lost in it and had ripped back and redone it so many times. She got really frustrated and she finally said, will you knit this for me? So I agreed to do it for her Christmas present. And obviously it's a little past Christmas, but anyway. So I said, sure. And when we were visiting them over the holidays, I got the pattern from her and all the extra yarn I got. She had started knitting the body and I think the thought was that I would just pick up where she had left off, but it was actually, the yarn was really worn from all the time she had ripped it out. Um, so I just decided, and there was plenty of yarn. So um, I set that aside and just started over. The yarn, by the way, is Ultra Alpaca, again, just like what I used in my cowl here. And the color, it's, I don't know what the name of it is because the, the label just had a number on it, but it's obviously this really pretty heathery lavender color. And if you look at it real close, you can see there's sort of different colors mixed in there. It's really, really nice. Um, 
but there were some modifications that I made to the pattern as per her request as well. So the biggest one, the two main ones have to do with the back. The original pattern calls for this cable pattern to be both on the front and the back. Um, you knit it in the round in one piece up to the armholes and then split for back and forth. So keeping track of that chart both places was going to be tricky, especially because one of the modifications she wanted was to add some short rows to the back section to accommodate for a curve in her spine, which um, she has especially a little bit at the top. So the short rows were going to start a few inches below the armhole and continue um, a few inches above the armhole. And I could tell right away that was going to get really complicated with this cable chart because if you're doing short rows just for the back, as soon as you do that, I was going to have to follow two different charts or be at two different places on the same chart. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to deal with that. So I decided to just do the back plane, which meant I had to adjust the stitch count just a little bit because when you have cables, especially over this many stitches that's going to pull your fabric in and it's going to require more stitches to get the same width than just plain stockinette so i knew what my gauge was with stockinette and i just figured out how many stitches i would need to go across the back and cast that on along with the usual stitches for the front and i was on my merry way so no cable panel in the back i added short rows i don't know if you can see them um, it's very subtle, but I hope it works out for her. She lives in a different state, so I'll have to send it to her and she'll have to tell me if it fits. The other modification was that she wanted the neckline lowered just a little bit and she wanted the shoulders a little bit narrower. So I just, um, just made the neckline a little bit wider and I lowered it in the front, which was very easy to do. So I have washed it and blocked it and hidden all the ends except for a couple right along the armholes because my mom has knit the sleeves. This is how it's a collaborative project. Um, and while even though it's not finished, I am finished. I hope if there's some fit problem, she'll have to send it back. But anyway, I left these in case she wants to use these for sewing in the sleeves. But here it is. In case I didn't mention, the pattern is called Weekend Pullover. It's by Michelle Rose Orne. It's from several years ago, and it was originally published by Swan's Island Company. Um, that pattern, I forget, I think I made the fourth size for her, and it only goes up to about a 52 inch circumference, which isn't very size inclusive, but that was may have been standard at the time. Not that it was okay, to not be size inclusive 10 years ago, but I think I think maybe that's that was more typical at the time. I'm not sure. So those are the finished objects that I have to show you for today. Moving into works in progress. Um, let's see, I have notes here. I have things listed. So first of all, I'll show you the easy stuff first. I have this hat. I don't actually remember if I have made progress since I last talked about it. It's possible that I haven't. Um, I started this hat. I grabbed the yarn and the needles literally on my way out the door about a month ago to a high school band concert because I just needed something to keep my hands busy. And I decided to make another polka polka hat because that's currently my favorite go-to hat pattern but I didn't even have time to deal with a provisional cast on so I just cast on long tail like a regular one and I figure when it comes time to do the lining I'll just pick up this I, I won't have live stitches I'll just pick them up around the edge and I think that'll be fine so in case you are not familiar with the polka polka hat pattern I've made four of them so far I think and given, given three of them away. Is that right? Yeah, I've given three away and I have one, it's my favorite and I wanna make more. 
but it's a double-sided or a, a lined hat. So one layer is fingering weight yarn, sock yarn or, or whatever, and the inner layer is lace weight fuzzy yarn. Um, I've used mohair silk blends so far, either Knit Picks Aloft or um, Indie Dyed. So I haven't figured out what to use for the lining for this one just yet because this is left over from a pair of socks that are no longer, I don't even remember who I made them for or where they ended up. But I love this yarn, I dropped it. It's from Mountain Colors and thank you Rose who left a comment in my video who said, is that barefoot? I think so, I think this is a barefoot yarn. There's a little bit of mohair in it. It is just, it's got a little bit of fuzz. Oh my gosh, and it wants to jump out of my hands. See if I can hang on to it this time. Um, it takes the dye beautifully. It's a really beautiful saturated blue and black color. And I think there might be nylon in it too, I'm not sure. They don't make this yarn anymore. Maybe Mountain Colors is going out of business. I don't even remember. I feel like I saw that somewhere. But anyway, I love how it's coming out in this hat because it's kind of coming out in this sort of irregular stripe pattern. Um, yeah, but I just, I wanted to mention it because I, last time I couldn't remember the name of the yarn and somebody reminded me what it is. So I still have to figure out what to use for the lining. I think black or navy blue would be really beautiful, but if I don't have that on hand, I might find something that's more of a contrast. We'll see. This is sort of a pick up when I'm going somewhere and I need knitting that I don't really have to look at very much or think about. So that's one work in progress. I also have, oh shoot, I have a pair of socks and I left them over there. So I will be right back. I have to go get them. I had to hunt these down. I forgot where I put it. So despite the fact that I have another sock in progress that I have not picked up in weeks and weeks, I started a new pair of socks and there's not a whole lot to say about it because these are again take along this is a take along project pretty straightforward and simple but I will show you what it is I've just got a little bit of the cuff done so far this is the yarn this is Knit Picks Hawthorne, and I have the label to show you. The color is Newport Hand Painted. And I got it during their big sale last fall because I was on the lookout for some good neutral colors to make socks for men. Um, men who like wearing plain neutral socks. So this is for my father-in-law. I have to tell you, he is one of the most knitworthy people in my life. He, um, when we were visiting them over the holidays, I think it was on Christmas day, he decided to wear as many things that had been given to him as he could. So he was wearing a shirt that somebody had given him. I'm pretty sure my mother-in-law had given it to him. He was wearing a belt um, with his name like burned on it, like leather burn, which honestly is probably not super his style, but it was a gift that his father-in-law had given him before he died. Um, and then he was wearing a pair of socks that I made him at least 15 years ago. Um, I couldn't believe he still had them and that they were still like wearable. Um, they live in North Carolina, so there's not a huge need for warm wool hand knit socks, but it does get cold there. And you know, you get above a certain age and you get cold really easily. So I decided that it's high time that I make him another pair of socks. He wears a lot of very understated neutral colors like browns and navy blues and stuff. So I thought that this yarn, which to me reads as a 
kind of a cool brown or khaki color um, would be a really good choice. So I'm using size one and a half needles. I always use double point needles for socks. That's how I learned and I'm not interested in another method, just so you know. Um, anyway, and I cast on 68 stitches. So Hawthorne is a little bit heavier than most sock yarns. Um, I don't know that I would say it's quite sport weight. It's not quite heavy enough to, that I would consider it to be sport weight, but it's only got 357 yards per 100 grams. And most sock yarns have at least 400 or closer to 450 yards. So I like to use a, a little bit bigger needle and just cast on a bit fewer stitches. So they'll go pretty fast once I get going on them. But this I brought along to, there was a piano recital, I think. I've had a lot of different events going on lately, both that my kids are involved in or that we just want to go see or that I'm involved in. And so that's how those socks got started. So those are kind of my take along, easy works in progress. They'll get done eventually. Um, my father-in-law's birthday is coming up really soon, come to think of it. So I should really get going on this. Um, but haven't seen much progress on that because earlier this week I started a new project. I was done with that sweater for my mom or at least the body of that sweater for my mom and I was just itching to start something new even though I have other things in progress that I should finish. But I just wanted to make something for me that, yeah, that just was very, that just felt good. So let me show you. I'm gonna show you, um, well, the pattern, I only printed out like instructions and not pictures because I don't have a color printer. But let me just tell you, I am making the Rose and Honey Shawl by Gabriella. Hello, Gabriella on Instagram. This is kind of a small little partial black and white picture of it here on the pattern. And I make like one or two shawls a year at the most. They're fun to make, I don't always wear them. But this is one I've had my eye on for a while. And what inspired me to make it was that, um, of course, February is Black History Month and um, the Black Knitter of the Black Knitter podcast on YouTube and also she's on Instagram is having a Black History Month make along. So um, to be eligible, like use a pattern by a black designer, um, yarn dyed by a black dyer, use a project bag made by a black maker, um, or any combination of those. So I'm using this pattern and then the yarn I'm using, I'll show you the skeins, show you skeins that I haven't used yet. The shawl calls for a fingering weight plus a mohair silk or fuzzy yarn held together. And I am using Rustic Fingering by Neighborhood Fiber Company. I bought this, I think two years ago when they had a sale without a plan. This is how I grow my stash, you all. Finding sales and not having a plan. The color is Bel Air, and it's this bright acid green, which I don't know if it's the best color for me, but I don't care, because I really like it. And one of the reasons actually that I hadn't, I, I think I had this pattern in mind not long after I bought the yarn, but then it took me a while to find another one to hold along with it that was the right color. Because if you're looking for the right green sometimes, it can be really hard to find one. And I ended up buying Knit Picks Aloft in the color Tarragon, which is a similar green. It's I think it's showing up a little more yellow here than it is in real life. But it's, it's a similar green, but it has a little more of a, a yellow scummy quality. So when you hold them together, you know, they're, they're pretty close, actually. Obviously not quite the same, but they're pretty close. But when you hold them together to knit with, 
this is what you get and I love it. I love how it feels. I mean, both of these together just feel so nice in the hands and the pattern. This is really good meditative knitting. Um, there are enough changes throughout the shawl that you don't get tired of doing any one thing. This is a, I don't know what you would call this stitch pattern, but you're knitting one below for a lot of it. And there's a little bit of a wave thing happening and you've got plain stockinette broken up with garter ridges. And I'm in the middle of the row, so I can't spread it out and show you, but it's a traditional kind of triangle shape where you um, do a garter tab cast on and there are increases up the middle and increases on the sides. So by now there's quite a few stitches. There's about not quite 300 stitches, I think, on my needles. Um, and I've started the second skein of the mohair and I have this much left of the first skein of the rustic fingering. And there's 475 yards in here. So that's, that's quite a bit. Um, but I think I'm gonna use most of two skeins of this and probably I'll have to get into the fourth skein of the Aloft. I got four skeins of that during the big sale too. So I am pretty excited about this one. It's just, it's gonna be really, really warm. It feels so nice to knit. And I really like how the colors look when you hold them together. It kind of glows. And I've heard people use say that before when they describe how, how it looks when you hold one strand of mohair silk with another yarn. And I think it's because the colors aren't exactly the same, but they're close. And there's just, there's something about two colors that are very close together. Um, like the colors are close to each other. And then something about the fuzz of the mohair just kind of giving a halo to everything. And the way the bright green of the rustic fingering kind of shows through that, like it's a little bit, I don't know, almost like a highlighter quality. Again, I don't know this is the best color for me, but I don't care because I really like it. And I will enjoy wearing it and it will keep me nice and warm. So this is like my work in progress that I've basically been knitting on exclusive of anything else all week. And I don't know when I'll finish it, but I think it'll be soon, which is exciting because then I can enter it into the self-indulgent knit along hosted by the Yarniacs podcast. I can enter it into the Black History Make Along from the Black Knitter podcast. And that's all very exciting. Um, oh, one here, I wanna show you this one stitch. At the very beginning, you do this knot stitch. It almost looks like a bobble, but it doesn't stick out quite like a bobble. And it's a little bit of a pain to execute, but I really like how it looks. So I kind of wish there were more of those. Maybe there are later, I don't know. I haven't really looked ahead in the pattern. I'm just kind of following along. So that's, that's what I've got so far, the Rose and Honey Shawl. I have been talking for over half an hour. So I think I'm gonna wrap that up for today. I do want to talk about stash, but I think maybe I will do that as a separate episode on its own because I really like to keep these a little shorter. I don't, I don't, I like my episodes to be about 30 to 40 minutes, so I don't ramble too much. Um, but I did get a request to talk about stash and I have a whole lot of different thoughts about it. So I think I will do that separately. And until then, Happy knitting and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.